Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the MMA Challenger scene, final week, week seven. I am the Hindu man. Alongside me today is the one, the only, Bond villain himself, Kretata. Kret, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing really good. I've got great plans to destroy the world later on today. But first, we're going to call a few matches together. My man, Hindu man, good to have you back. How was Sweden? Thank you. In three it, words? It was Sweden. Okay. Oh, you heard it here first, folks. Sweden is Sweden. Tautologies are tautologies. And our first game is going to be a game. It's Trilogy versus Torch in our first match of the last week of the North American Challenger Cup. We'll be getting pulled in shortly. Any ideas what you want to see here? I believe Sylvanas is playable today. I'm not 100% certain on that. If it is playable, we may see some Sylvanas play. This was before the nerfs come out. Obviously, the patch notes are going to be hitting like Monday, Tuesday. Say Wednesday more than likely, and so with that, you may see a Sylvanas pick up. We'll see overall. I'll be interested to see what both teams choose, honestly. Overall, because yeah. I feel at the moment, crap, there's that much that is you know too strong, in my opinion. I don't think anything's too broken, is the I, words I'm going to use. I'm going to go with the opposite opinion. You think there's too but much agreeable? Too broken? I think I think there's like 15 things that are OP, so you just have a lot of options. 15 things. Yeah, 15? I mean, you've got, you've got like, you've got super high priorities in every role. Like, you've got Apollo and Rom and on her, and nothing else is really, like, worth thinking about. You've got Geb and Athena. Uh, you've got Yanis and Ra, and I don't know. I feel like there's See, just a few not characters. you've not got 15. You just said there was 15, and you got, like, Let six. me take a god list, and, you and I'll done. go back, I'll and list them done. all. No, no, no. Sir you a statement. You need to know the answer beforehand. Come on, crap. Oh, man. All right, all right, in this right. You're asking no. a lot. Okay, okay. Get back on the oh, ball, oh, son. You I'll write up a Reddit long. post. Come on. I'll write up a Reddit post. Better have to. Please. Anyway, first two bands coming out. Sir Ket and Yenis taken off the board by Trilogy and Torch, respectively. I'm going to add those to my list. Uh, both very strong picks. Well, Athena, too. You said Giannis already, so you can have that one. Sir Ket, you didn't say, but Sir Ket, still very strong. She has yeah. had that bug fix, though, as well, hasn't she? Yeah, with the and death a very now? slight nerf with the mm. ambush cooldown. The nerf, not really that big of a deal. It makes her slightly more likely to die because her ambush might still be on cooldown, but she still has so much escape. And Sir Ket's just hard to play, but she can be very effective. Oh, for sure. I think she's one of the most mechanical junglers there is right now, but her damage yeah. is absolutely amazing if you can manage to use her to her full potential. And, you know, one of the biggest issues a lot of people have with Saket is actually pitching her when they're trying to kill her because Deathbane is a great escape as well as Ambush is a very tricky target to try and get hold of. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Ra, first pick. And Ra is a character that's kind of been a sleeper all throughout the Pro League in the Challenger Cup. He has had a very high win rate across the board. I believe it's sitting around 60, just off the top of my head. He's always been played. He's very common. We're seeing him first picked, but honestly, Robin, I don't think we've actually seen that much at all. It's not a common ban. The only times I've really seen a raw ban, like I know Proxy QQ up from the Potato Boys sure. likes to ban away raw, just because he's one of these very aggressive solo laners, and he doesn't want the safety of somebody who's going to sit on the tower and just, you know, Use the saving pain and clear the way, you know? Well, the other nice thing about Raw, I mean, he's kind of hands down the most viable AoE healer. I don't want to say the best, because Hell's really good, but can you play Hell? Or That's will you get as much healing out of Guan or as much healing out of some of the other picks? Sylvanas is maybe going to contest Raw once he's, uh, you know, played a little bit more, but right now Raw is just the team healer that you can actually play. I'm not putting Aphrodite in that mix because she heals single targets. She is very strong and can sort of contest Ra, but they have different roles. Well, so far we've got Ra, Geb, or Rama locked in for Trilogy, Torch, Have, Apollo, Thor, and Noir. And like you were saying, like even though I said there was no one OP, these are the ones that are the go-to gods, so to speak. This is nothing unusual in terms of picks here overall. Yeah. With the Athena ban as well, it's going to be interesting to see where Torch go with their support pick. If Sylvanas isn't available, then we're probably looking at Kumbakana or Bacchus here more than likely, would you expect? Uh, yeah, I mean, Bacchus is sort of a standard third string support, but it could be anything. I think it just comes, okay, um, I mean, it comes down to the individual play Odin hovered on and locked in, that fits the support player. Like, if yeah. you want to play Odin, he's very, very capable, he brings a lot to the table with the new ring, but you have to remember, his base stats suck. He has the same base stats as Uller. 
I mean, the other thing is, Odin does bring a bit of ambiguity to this pick and ban phase here because he can yeah. technically run the solo lane as well. And you could also have Thor in the support role. I'm kind of like spitballing out ideas here, but it is possible that Touch could look for something a little bit different as well. Nuwa could be mid, could be solo. Ra, same case, but right now, with Chuck and Freya being hovered over, nice lineup from Trilogy. I really like their composition here. Yeah, you know, I got a feel for Torch just looking over the roster really quick. I mean, they had a lot of trouble uh, coming into the Challengers Cup. They came from the planes but didn't make it, and they had a renewed roster that they were really excited about. It didn't work out, and, and Torch... They feel like a bit of, a little bit like the thirst of the Challengers Cup in that their roster just keeps changing, so you can't really get a beat on how the team would actually be doing if they had the same five players. And historically, that's just been a big problem for this team. It sort of feels like a revolving door. Agni is a less common pick, but I feel like it's a meta shift that made him that way, less than any sort of nerfs or viability. He's still very good. Yeah, he's still very, very viable as well. Like, in the right composition and just straight up in lane, he doesn't really have too many really bad matchups, let's be honest. Yeah. Maybe one through four, he has a bad laning phase against one or two gods, but once he hits five, generally, he has a pretty good match against most of the gods in mid. Right, what it comes down to is when you drop Agni's burst, it's over the course of about four seconds for bomb, 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 flame wave, and then dash adds five. Whereas a character like Ra hits with celestial uh celestial beam and searing pain and that is gonna hit at the same point so it's really bursty whereas agni has a kit dump but i don't want to actually call it burst chuck versus new we're gonna see in the solo lane here from trilogy versus torch with the chuck versus new I just, we're gonna probably see a farm lane all in all i don't really see either of them they both have pick kill potential technically mm -hmm. but it's if somebody misplays more than anything else yeah, I mean, if one of them gets really far ahead, we could see the snowball. And so we want to look at the junglers, Frey and Thor, and I think specifically more at Thor to see if he can really get stuff done. Thor is definitely the more early game jungler here. He has that global presence. He's very strong at low levels. So it's going to be on Torch's jungler to see if they can really get this game rolling in favor of Torch because their composition honestly kind of lacks peel. You have a little bit of self-peel on Agni and Apollo. Oh, actually, you really get self-peel on Agni and Apollo, but... Yeah. Nua is just going to drop the stealth, run around, and probably end up dying. And would Trilogy, you, you... I mean, they have good team fight. I mean, with Thor in the jungle, would you really look at focus on the Darker? I'd not, not only look at focus no. on the Ra in mid. If you go for Ra in mid and get Agony, put Ra behind on the heels, that could be really beneficial for the team. Overall, they're able to control the mid camps a little bit more as well. That, that could be a really good option for Torture. I, I want to say it's going to be jungle invade, or it should be jungle invades. Just fight mm. in the jungle, bring your team. You have more global presence, which That's is true. a really big factor. I mean, it's it's Nua, which is true global, Apollo, which is true global, Thor, which is semi-global, but he's a jungler, so he'll be there. And then it's like a team that has Rom, which is a semi-global, semi not that great. So I want to see invades come out from Torch, but you know, we'll see what their uh, shot calling is going to be like this game. Either way, guys, we're going to head into our first match of the North American Challenger Cup, Week 7 Trilogy versus Torch in a best of one in the first round. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Game 1 North America Challenger Scene Week 7. Game 1's going to face Trilogy. is going to be facing off against Torch. Trilogy starting on the bottom half of your map, the left-hand side of your Spectator UI. We're going to see Synapse playing Freya in the jungle. Lil Toonies and Geb in the support role. MS Saint is going to be playing Chuck Solo. Vixosity is going to be playing Raw Mid. And Defax is going to be playing Rama AD Carry. What have we got on the other crowd? On the other side with Torch, you've got One Glance Team Captain in the ADC role. As Apollo 2 viewer will be his support as Odin in the mid lane. It's quasi blazed fittingly on Agni in the solo lane. Penguins for life on Nua. And in the jungle, Starkey on Thor. So, right at the start of this game, looking at Odin, he's going to be in the support role, but look what he started here. He's gone for the Death's Toll, looking for the really, really early aggression in this lane. And I like this because he's against a Geb. Yeah, yeah, so he could definitely be very aggressive, and Geb's going to have some trouble trading out uh, damage well with that Odin. But I think it sort of is going to put Torch more on an early game focus, and they're going to That's need right. to get a relatively large advantage early on because... Having Death's Toll instead of Watcher's Gift does delay your sovereignty, so you need to get gold off of your Death's Toll by I think, killing people. I 
think this is a good idea, though, from Tosh, because like like yeah. we said, I mean, if you look at their team, Thor's very early game looking for the aggression, and the longer this game goes, Freya and Rama become an issue, you know, and then Chuck's going to be big, he's going to be strong, he's going to be hard to bring down. So Torch's game plan here with this Dessel, I really like the mindset they've gone in with this one. Totally agree. They just have to make it work for them. The game will start. People are pulling their camps, and it looks like there are no invades. Freya is going to be soloing red buff, which actually is going to put the trilogy solo lane at an advantage no, if they can quick. get it done. Well, Freya did take the red on her own there, but Chuck was a little bit late on taking oh, those mid caps, so he didn't true. get level two there overall. So it's going to delay him a little bit of experience in lane over the fact that Agni's Agni's actually going to be in the solo lane this time, not New War. They decided to go for the lane switch here. What do you feel about the Agni Chuck matchup? Honestly, I feel like it's more about the Nua Ra matchup, which Ra should be winning pretty well, whereas Agni versus Ra is historically even, but when you're when you're Ra against Nua, or rather when you're Nua against Ra, you can have a lot of trouble really getting those minions off because Ra Slush will be will basically one shot them for the majority of the game. And then on top of that, because you've not got them, you can't really burst down the enemy minion wave is it effectively, and he's just gonna heal up his minions over and over again. Exactly. Now, in the dual lane, you've got Geb down to just two health potions, does have one running right now, and that's a little bit of the aggression that you mentioned before. One Glance is sitting at level 3, so does have that experience advantage in lane, and this is going to be a big opportunity for Torch to push their advantage. One Glance is probably their star player, and they just oh, need to the keep best. that aggro up, Bird Bomb hitting so very hard. The big thing for Geb here is he's still got two mana potions in the, sorry, health potions in the bank now. He just popped another one. An aggressive onto Rama here, but the shield comes out. Immediate roll away. No more disengage there, but it was a nice aggression from Torch. But can they get more of this? They're going to have to keep applying that pressure over and over again. And get Geb low enough to actually kill. Well, actually, Geb a little bit far up, but no Gugners might skilled on that. Oh. Odin. Now, Defax rolling forward, but he that actually was, too was safe to do that. I mean, yeah, it, it was a weird decision. He probably shouldn't have, but... Everything was also down from Torch, so he couldn't really be punished for it. The other thing I want to mention is Thor did not take an aggressive jungle route, so he's going to just be giving Freya a good farm. And while there is more efficient sharing coming out from Torch, I feel like Freya should not have been given the luxury of a clean farming path. Oh, relaxing so far in this game. Just aggression in the duo lane. You can see Agni rushing through in this solo against the Chuck. Gonna have the early game push, but the ult that comes out from looking to put the pressure on. He needs to watch his position in here over though, because the bomb's gonna rain down. And now with his ult on cooldown, he's not gonna have the protections that he can get to reduce the damage path. If Flame comes out, nice bit of damage on. I don't think he's gonna be able to kill him, but he's gonna be able to force him back here because Chuck's not got any more sustain left in his kit. Yeah, so now the question is, what's Agni going to do with this? In my opinion, I feel like he should rotate for mid camps. Uh -oh. But, left. okay, he's going to take a recall on the left-hand side. Yeah, Freya is lurking in the jungle. We'll find Odin. Her storage will be running out soon. They are off. The cage comes down. Freya's only level four. Dashing from one glance seems a little bit strange. This People really are getting good. turned on hard. No, one glance oh, is a horrible up. position. Thor is going to come down. Defax in a lot of trouble. And he's going to get down to just 100 health. The double tap not going to connect, but that wall will be ult. enough, and Apollo will get first blood. Now he's got, on no he's got the steroids, but Freya with no ult, there's just no way oh, except for a banish in the body block. Double was good enough. The, the hammer back and forward doesn't connect, but that was a great turnaround from Torch there. Honestly, overall, I felt that that was a big mistake because Odin had just used his full combo to go aggressive and get when Freya came in, but held on long enough. And managed to come out on top of that one overall. Great turnaround. Rama just ends up getting caught out. It was it was great turnaround overall, but it wasn't clean. There there were mistakes Very made. True. Like Apollo dashing in didn't really do anything but use his dash. And so decisions like that need to be cleaned up going forward. I mean, it might get them through this round, but that's not gonna fly in the semifinals or in the finals of this tournament. So Torch looking good. But there's always improvement to be made. Always, always going to be an improvement. Having a look over the solo lane once again. Agni's doing a good job in this lane overall. He's keeping Chuck pressured and Ch Chuck rushing the boots next. He's not gone for any sort of defensive item. Would Guy be a good pick here? Overall? Oh, hold oh, on, Chuck. I think he needs it. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Stone of Guy, would that be the right option? Or would it be Hide of the Urchin? Would you look elsewhere? And Seele, uh, maybe? I mean, there's plenty of options now. It's going to extend for a warrior to possibly consider building into. 
Honestly, I feel like he just has to stick with the aggressive build at this point. But he's going to need to find a way to just stay afloat in this lane. Agni is just doing so well in this matchup in the middle lane. Ra uses an Aegis out. The stone minions are not going to oh, pop as they were ulti. slowed. Ra is very low, but the ulti is on Down, cooldown. Cool so it's just a recall force. Rama oh, rotating over the middle lane. That's a little bit strange. It's going to give one glance pressure on the tower. A wave going in. So he does, he's going to miss a lot of fun. Doing anything here. And he's going to get blown up, actually, down to 50% health. Ross still in the area. Oh, with the bird bomb coming in. Odin does not have the cage. Uh -oh. Right Meanwhile, in the jungle, we're going to see Freya manage to pick up a four in there. Agni's trying to run towards mid lane now. So the three men are going to group, but it'll be a 4v3 situation if they choose to continue engaging. Nice damage coming out from Agni with the Make It Rain one more time. I don't think they can find anything else out as the snipe comes out nicely used from Ra there just to clear the minions more than anything else and relieve that pressure. And overall, she come out on top. Yeah, I, I would say so. They do get that kill, which was definitely important, but... They lost a lot of farm in their duel lane. Geb picking up a few creep waves. One glance is now sitting at level 8 over a level 6 ROM. And he's also up looking like 700 gold. Here's the thing. Apollo is not a bad boxer. He is worse than ROM. But when you have this kind of advantage, 6 minutes into the game, Apollo will get lane control. And when you have a split pusher oh, with global presence. Odin Ring comes out and he's going to jump onto the gap. The Cataclysm comes out in response, trying to buy himself some time. There's a knock-up as well, but he's not got anything else to get away as he rolled into that situation there, Kret. And left hand side, you're going to see Rama in a lot of... As Apollo goes aggressive and brings him down. Rama looking to box two levels down. Not a good call. Yeah, that's not going to work. And now Freya going to get exploded on. Doesn't take too much damage from that, as I believe only explosion hit, not the not the shining metal. Uh, one glance will take this tower on the left-hand side. And as I was saying, I mean, when Apollo gets ahead, he's not bad enough at boxing that he won't have lane control and global presence. So he's just going to be the better adc all throughout this match in terms of a god roll unless something changes there needs to be a big gank on this left lane well lane control is definitely in favor all of the map for touch and when you talk about global presence right now they just took both mid camps down as well for themselves that's going to give them a small lead as we look at the graphs quickly you can see a five five thousand experience lead only seven minutes in we can see apollo gets in a bit of trouble over there but immediately the chariot comes out and danger has been averted again as we look at a 2.8k gold lead for torch as well still gold fury standing it's a lot of gold to pick up without a gold fury and they've been doing a great job of out farming out rotating and out pressuring their opponents big plays in the jungle as well off of uh off of that Geb kill, finding the solo kill onto Rom in the solo lane. Quasi Blood uh -oh. is gonna his do ult. pretty well. Saint and this should ult. be a kill. Yeah, there it is. Saint went aggressive and Agni just bought himself as much time as possible for his cooldowns to come up one more time. And that was fantastic. But now he's gonna get rotated on by Rock. Geb's waiting in the wings as well. But look at him buying time for himself to get out. Path of Flames used as a good stun. He's gonna get slowed out a little bit from that. But he should be able to just walk away. He does judge. The pain for now as Thor comes in and here comes New Wise. The turnaround going to be here. The Make It Rain does come down. Meanwhile, Thor does find a kill onto Rama. The Slack does connect from Ra though. And Thor coming down for the dunk does not find it. The Age is going to buy some time. But the damage from New War comes off as the back and forward from the Hammer connects. But the speed up should be enough for him to get away. Everything's on cooldown. Going to survive for now. Yeah, Speed of Light is going to get Ra out. But, I mean, at what cost? That was not a good trade overall. They did get Agni and he was a valuable kill. But... Shock went down initially. Uh, you had the solo kill or the duo kill in the left hand lane where Rama was taken out. It's just Torch is getting control of this game. Their ADC is very far ahead. And now Freya in trouble on the left hand side. Bird Bomb is not going to connect, so she'll be okay for now. But here, here's the thing as I mentioned before, this Apollo needs to be ganked. He's level 12. Who ganks him? You've Who got. Him? I mean, they, just, they rotated three men over there a minute ago, Kret, and he just went, Chariot, peace. I'm done. And, and left the battlefield yeah. in instantaneously. Yeah, there's just not enough farm getting to this jungler, which is strange because he's actually 1-0-0. Zero zero. So it feels like Synapse is just trying to help out his team too much when, honestly, on Freya, that's not really your job. Chuck trying Left to make a play side, on the blue right buff, does side. not find it. Now he's going to be surrounded by two. Ra coming in as well, though. There comes the heal. The Celestial Beam does connect, but Ra trades back. Sorry, Agni trades back over all, but he takes a lot of damage for it. And now he's going to be in a world of hurt. Can't buy enough time. The Snipe connects in the back of that onto Thor as well. So two quick kills picked up for Trilogy. They could look for a gold fury here, I feel, and this would be a really good call for them. But it looks like they're going to go for the tier one on right. And looks like Torch is actually focusing really hard in this early game, which... 
I'm not sure how I feel about it. You've got an, an Ichival coming out of one glance, which means that he wants to fight now because, let's be honest, it's obviously not going to do as much damage as an Executioner over the course of the game. It's just more of a one-on-one -on -one dueling item, which I do like on Apollo, but it's definitely got that early game focus. Now, get yeah. in trouble. A there might not actually be enough damage here as Nuwa did oh, there lose is. her abilities. Oh, there is. Because Apollo's here as well from the sky. Gonna dunk down to finish it off. It was a possibility he escaped there for a moment, but I don't... What's kept, did get max his shield deck? Because that shield did not look very strong. He's been maxing his shockwave overall, so not mm -hmm. got a big shield on for himself there. And in doing so, he does give him a little less survivability for him and his team there, Crap. I do want to mention that Odin also has had really bad luck with his passive, not actually able to get any kills. Uh, Ooh, actually, big bird bomb coming out, but Freya going to turn it around, and now Nua should find that kill. Getting two, and now Defax in a lot of a trouble. Triple. He doesn't really have a good She's way out. For it. Bam! Wow, the minion's exploding for so much damage. But as I mentioned, Odin does not have any stacks. His cage keeps wearing off because they're using it to get the catch instead of using it to confirm the kill. So a little bit of intricacy with that character in his passive. Well, Geb is alive. He's going to see this Gold Fury being done. They've got a ward around this area, so they should have a good understanding this is going on. Here comes Geb in. Can Geb actually force this? Are they going to just reset it? They're trying to buy time to bring down Geb, but Force tanking up for a very, very long time there overall. Nuwa gets aggro. They need to reset this here, Kret. They need to reset it, or Geb could actually steal this one if he knows what to do in this situation. It looks like he's changed his mind, though. He's trying to get out of trouble, and he's going to go down. And now, with Odin back online, that is going to be a Gold Fury for Torch 100%. Well, Freya coming in, she's gonna try and contest, gonna try and prove you wrong, but I don't know how that's gonna work out as the bird bomb comes in, dropping oh, her down oh, to half. Oh. Odin is so far ahead, but oh, Torch does get it, only barely, which was a little bit risky with Odin jumping away from that. Now, Ra coming in, doesn't have the angle he wants, and Odin coming around will try and make something right happen. Side. He's not gonna contest with this Ra on the right hand side. And Chalk is forced back there, he's just been having so much trouble in this lane. He really has. He's been pressured consistently all the way through. I don't think he's really played against an Agony in lane before. I guess that's one of the biggest issues, is dealing with a mage with the sort of burst potential he's got and wave clear during the start. Now in the middle lane, that tower is getting focused down. It's strange that one glance is tanking. Oh, I don't really know what Odin's doing there, but they will get he's the tower. He's just being aggressive. Oh, he's going to go in again, get some nice burst off and immediately back out one more time. Meanwhile, right inside goes down as well in favor of Agony. So that's three towers across the map now, now in favor of Torch. As an advantage, quick check of the grass. We're going to see a 12,000 experience lead. 6,500 gold as well in favor of Torch. And this one's looking pretty comfortable for him right now. But anything can change. This is Smite. Yeah, I mean, Torch definitely does have a window because of the way they're building and how they're looking for the early game. Strange decision to go Ninja Tabi on Odin. I'm just going to go ahead and say that's hmm. wrong because you're trying to do damage with your Bird Bomb and this is reducing the damage you deal by a significant... Or you could deal by a significant amount because penetration is so good. But it's increasing um, the amount of times he can do it, though. Technically, yeah. yeah. It's nah, so close. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm spitballing. I'm spitballing. Go with me. Go the with thing me. is, the thing is, Odin generally jumps in and starts the fights with his bird bomb, but you don't yep. really want to clean up with it. Oh, Apollo going aggressive onto Ram on the left hand side. He's caught him out 1v1 and he's level 14 versus 10. And all Rama can do is bravely run away. He can't get the juke boots on. He's going to fall in now. There's going to be a rotation coming out from Trilogy. As they try and defend this tier 2 tower. Apollo's here, so it's Odin for the zone. The ring comes out and it's on to Frey as the focus. Good punish from her. Immediately uses the Valkyrie to buy herself some time. Geb going to give her some cover, but here's Nuwa on the backside. Minions don't go the way she wants to. It went for Geb and not for the Freya who used her ultimate. Chat comes in with the dunk down. And now with Nuwa going to the sky from some extra damage. Apollo going to look for a finish off. Who's the finish off going to be on? So he's looking for Apollo. Finds it. That's Odin for you. And now Thor and Agony not even involved in this fight yet have now turned up to join this fray. Yeah, they're going to be coming in and with that wall off, oh, it should sound. be the disengage from Torch, but it looks like that's a difference of opinion as Odin jumps back in. M. Saint in trouble. The bomb and the stun is going to be so good. Big oh. And now at Lil Tune, he's he cataclysms a little bit too late, but it's not going to be cataclysm for him as he's just allowed to walk away. Thor going oh. up, doesn't want to let Ra get out. And with a good wall, this should be a kill. The ages, but it's a zap man ages. He is dead for sure. There's a four for zero, Hindu man. That's, that's big. I just want to give a shout out to Geb. He did get a five man cataclysm off, okay? And, like, as a Geb, that is the dream. Achievement. The, the, the dream. I don't even care how many of my team die if I get a five man oh, cataclysm yeah. off. Oh, yeah. Worth. Achievement Worth unlocked.
worth 100% of the time. Really, really good for the Cataclysm overall, though. Torch's rotations there were just great. Like, Rama getting caught out by Apollo, and then immediately Odin did great work to focus onto the Freya. They're going to steal away the blue buff on the right-hand side is Agni, and he's going to be able to bravely walk away from this one, pop the Path of Flames if required, and there it goes. 15 minutes in, 17 to 5, and Torch are really in control now. You know, to your point, Geb now has 3,600 player damage, and I want to say that Cataclysm had to be at least 1,000. So, really betting those stats with that one. Uh, the right hand side, Freya is in so much trouble. I mean, Cage comes down. Ah! Oh, that's an interesting interaction. What? EOT will get the kill, and now Agni oh, in no. trouble. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was actually a dot from Path of Flames. I was like, yo, I'm so down if that's what Agony can do. I'm raining fire on every <laughs> single flying Valkyrie free I ever see again. I was excited, but now Odin going aggressive. Like level 14, level 13 on the Chak. That's the support versus the solo laner crut. And he's, eight, he's one level ahead of him as well. He's one level ahead of the mid laner too. Odin, this game, they banned it. They banned Athena, they picked Geb, and Odin went, what's up, boys? I'm back. And he's, he's kind of put on a really good show so far, yeah, even yeah. though you're not happy with his build. I mean, he is really, really farmed this game and does have a fair amount of gold to his name, but his sob is still going to be a little bit slow. Thor coming down, and that's going to be a dead shock real quick. And here's the thing I want to focus on, Hinman. Torch can keep getting kills all day. They're going to be doing that here with the a, a engage on the Freya, but that's not how you win games. You need towers. And is Torch passing some sort of important point in the game? Are they fighting too much? I don't know. I don't think so. Because at the moment, the fight is still going in the favor. Apollo comes in with a chariot, looking for the aggression onto Freya, who's user already. Ra going to slow him down and buy some time. The blind going to do a little bit. Celestial Beam comes out. Doesn't do a lot of damage, though. He's still too low level to really get the items online he needs. Rama goes to the sky, looking for the snipes. Who's he looking for? He looked for Apollo first, then looked for Thor. Doesn't find any of those at all. Gold Fury up soon, but I think Torch should be looking for the fire giant here. They really do need to look for something. I mean, no inner towers down at a 17 minutes. When you're a team that's up 8,000 gold, you want to be really prioritizing the towers. Now, gold but is ages. much less important. In the middle lane, Ra's going to reduce a lot of damage. Now, Agni could be caught out. Freya coming in with the pulse irradiates, but with a whole minion wave, Rama you're going to have to rely on Ram, and it's a kill on the left-hand side. Valkyrie's discretion, this Agni will fall, and he's going to be worth a lot of gold. Four members of Torch rotating in. They want revenge for their fall. This is As a one for one is not worth Thor up in the air. Nua as well. Here comes the combo. It's going to be onto Chalk, which is not ideal, but good enough. And damage out onto the backs. Looks like he's running away. Synapse getting turned on, and that's going to be a dead Freya. Oh, I don't know. Unless I don't the know. Oh, yes, one is. glance finds the shot. And now they're going to want to turn on the tower really I, soon before they get forced back. They need to back out. They need to back out because too many people are tanking up the tower here. Overall, they're trying to bring them all down. Chag's still alive for the time being. They're going to focus the tower now. It's getting lower. You can already see Thor and Odin both waiting in the wings to try and do something. But get back online now. Mid tower's going to fall. I don't know if they needed to do that whole fight, Kurt. Let's be honest. Like... They had the opportunity to do Gold Fury, they just killed Geb, but they went for kills. I think they're, they're confident now. But the problem is, like you keep saying, if they don't get more and more stuff out of this game, sooner rather than later, Freya is going to hit full build, critical mass, as is Rama. It may take them a while, but if they keep the game going long enough, then this could be swung. Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, the thing is, Trilogy might not be able to make the comeback, but Torch is creating opportunities for a comeback is true. what it comes yeah. down to so they they do need to be pressuring jungle pressuring objectives pressuring towers and looking to hit trilogy where it hurts because once again this isn't just a best of one and done i mean there's a whole tournament after this oh, and for sure. torch needs to be on good form for this game and for all of the next so we go again bomb Double ring. this needs to be good fight oh, so Ring's gonna be good. Nice uh, ult coming out from Rom to just peel off for himself. But that wall is amazing. The double tap's gonna find a kill. Big Cataclysm. And I think that's a four man. So this Geb is on a roll. So he's not gonna be able to roll safety as Odin re engages. Well, the re engage comes in as Thor comes in with the Mignols and he's gonna find a kill on the backside. Thanks to the help of Apollo with those in hands. And now Penguins for Life brings down Chuck. All five members of Torch still standing. They need to make a decision where to go. I don't think they're strong enough right now to go for the Fire Giant. But if they base right now, they could look for the Fire Giant straight after. I think Apollo's gonna head straight over there right now by the looks of it. Or he's gonna push in right while the rest of his team recall. This should be a Fire Giant call right here, right now, crap. Yeah, they want to go directly for the th fire giant o or a tower. I mean, they could probably just push in a lane. But the thing about these team fights, 
Torch is winning them, but they're too low to do anything afterwards, That's right. That's which right. shouldn't really be happening, I want to say. Now, Geb caught out on the right-hand side. He should be able to roll away from this. Yeah, oh, I mean... It looked like he was buying time so his team could do the fire giant, but they're going to turn on Geb, make sure he goes down completely so he can't contest his fire giant whatsoever. Geb falls down. Do they have another hog three on the team? They don't. Freya does not have one on her at the moment, which means that that is no hog three available for Trilogy to try and contest this, but they have to. Yeah, they really do need to, uh... They really do need to take down, or fight over this fire giant, otherwise the game will just end without their consent. Fuzzy Blaze trying to zone, and that Path of Flames is going to be good. Snipe Ooh, comes through, will connect, and that's actually going to be a kill. <laughs> Thanks to the Lava to Fax, able to find one as well with his ultimate by MC getting turned on and absolutely destroyed. On the left-hand side, Rom engaged on, will be having a lot of trouble as he tries to kite, but one glance is just too big, and will be able to get the kill with the help of the Fog, and actually going over to Penguins for life for that kill. Now, Apollo up so, in the air, wants to come down onto Freya. The new ult will follow up, but a nice vantage and a nice shield. That's going to be Odin blinking in. Not quite finding a kill thanks to Valkyrie's discretion, but this is inevitable. The question is when Fog finds the Damn. kill. Because he can't juke that. It's too big. You can't. You... No, you can't. Because you can. No, I mean, no, you, you could. If it's at your but face. It's... Like, if it spawns when you're right in front of him, yeah, it's kind of difficult. Uh, I wouldn't call it a juke. I wouldn't call it a juke. I call it a <laughs> miss. Run away! Yeah, that's generally how you play it. Tier 2 on the right hand side drops down. That just leaves one tower on the map remaining for Trilogy. Torch have the Fire Giant online, at least on three members of the team there overall. And big shout outs to Odin in that engagement as well. Straight for the Fire Giant there, Crack. He zoned off both Freya and Ra and left Nuwar and Apollo free to do their dirty work onto the remaining members of that Rama and the um chuck as well he picked they picked both those up while odin just kept two people locked in a ring but no phoenixes but Not yet. no phoenixes i mean so torch once again leaving opportunities open trilogy has had some decent fights but they're getting cleaned up because they don't really have great disengage i mean sort of no ability as a team to run away. There are quite a few actives not picked up. Shell just getting bought for Geb. Freya still sitting on only one active. And when you've died seven times, honestly, I mean, I'd be happy to see a combat blink. In fact, I think Freya kind of needs a combat blink just to get away. Yep. Speaking uh, of getting get away, away that's that. a big that's the question. Cage coming down, which seems like a little bit too much. Thor is up in the air. Okay. But he went down on the left-hand side looking for Rob. Tower is that was a bit too like that 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 was like that Simpsons episode you know where yeah. he goes stop he's already dead stop because that's exactly how it felt watching that engagement there they wasted a lot to bring down the Freya but now it's going to be a four v five and the members of Trilogy have to turtle at this Phoenix but are they going to be able to even get here in time for them to bring down the versus well Jack's on the front line Geb's trying to tank it up for as long as possible Phoenix falls and now Geb's surrounded by three gets a good cut clips him off onto a couple of members but no follow up just yet or is the snipe does not connect from Ra he's trying to buy some time for Geb to roll out and he does do so Jack with the ultimate just buying time but Penguins for life much skill such wow with that ultimate does bring down Geb as he rolls back to base one glance continues in with Penguins for life, brings down the raw. Chuck on the backside once again, fighting the agony, the fight of death for the whole of his life. And it looks like Apollo's going back to go and pick up the Chuck. Not to be, because Agony does it solo. Phoenix falls, and now they're going to be able to look at mid. Yeah, I mean, the great thing about Nuwa is she's sort of actually weird that one glance is going to go push the wave, because Nuwa brings minions on yep. demand that... I feel like was the original intention of the original Nuwa, and then it turned out she was an insane backdoor character by herself. But the idea of a character bringing minions so you can always push is very interesting at the very least. And now, right, Phoenix gonna be turned on. Those minions should be coming out soon as Nuwa has the mock cooldown in one second. But Phoenix dies just too fast. One glance able to carve through that with the help of his team. And with three Phoenixes down, you already know Trilogy is in so much trouble. And Given their experience and their gold, I think Fire Minions might just be able to end the game by themselves. Yeah, they probably could do in this situation. So they're going to retreat back for now. Torch not looking to try and push on an end, possibly make a small mistake that could drag the game out longer than it needs to overall. I mean, the one thing to note as well, Craig, is both these teams cannot qualify for the wildcard spot, but there is cash on the line. Every yeah. single week of the challenger scene, there is cash involved. And if you can get to those top three spots, there is cash available. And gems for fourth place as well, if you didn't know. 750 gems handed out to every fourth place finisher. So all these guys are competing. They're not just for the cash, but also for the experience. 
compete against teams that are of decent level or equal level or above you just so you can learn to get better as a team and grow and learn from the mistakes that you make. That's what it's all about. You just got to get on that grind. So, someone hit up my Ask FM and was like, hey, what can I do to get better at a team? And Bye. It's anonymous, so I have no idea who they were. So yeah, I mean, the general advice is you just play. You stick together and you realize yep. it's a grind. It takes time. I mean, Anister has been and probably still is by some people considered to be the best player in the world. It took him a long time. I mean, two years of just playing. That's, but that's, that's how you get better. And as a team as mm -hmm. well, every, every team has weaknesses and strengths, but it's about playing to those strengths and dealing with those weaknesses in an effective way. So these sort of games do give them the opportunity. And now Torch going to take the fire giant for the second time this game, I believe. Or is this the first? No, it's the second. Pretty sure they got it last time as well. Yeah, this is the second fire Why am I lying? giant. We've got, we've got stats for this. We've got stats we do, in the bottom right corner. I'm not used to this. I'm used to guessing. And now I've got stats on the screen that tell me. Thank you very much. So... Oh, Phoenix is down, blinking from Odin, gonna find Ooh. two in the ring of doom. Valkyrie comes out to get her out of here, throw them down onto her. Agony Bomb does rain down, and there's Odin with the kill onto him. Apollo's in the sky, gonna come down onto the Chuck at the backside. Age is gonna buy him a second. But as you said earlier, that was a Zatman Aegis, and that's gonna be all she wrote for him. And now Gav on the final frontier with the Cataclysm, the Snipe combo. The Titan, will you help them out, boy? You need to, because these guys are in a lot of trouble right now. Trilogy on their last legs, as is the Titan, as they continue to push the minions in. Torch, looking to end out this game. Nice rollout, will have a Titan reset as Odin jumps in with the Bird Bomb onto Ra. He's back in the fountain. No weakening curse, so they can't use that little trick, but the Titan now getting turned on. 50%, 25%, done! First down so quick once Torch set their mind to it, able to get those objectives and get it done. They will be moving on to the next round where they face, I believe, five angry men. Going to be a tough match. Yo, that's a big tough match. I mean, that game for them went very, very well. But as we discussed for Torch in that game crap, they had more opportunities to get objectives overall. Mm -hmm. Some of their ganks and stuff were not crisp. They weren't clean. They could be a lot cleaner. They used abilities that didn't need to be used, which causes mana and causes things to be on cooldown in case a rotation comes out that could cause them. So they just need to, you know, clean things up a little bit, I think, going into the next game. Yeah, I mean, it just comes down to, uh, I feel like, clearer calls and having direction and being like, okay, we're in this situation. What do we want to do? And overall, I mean, they got it done. They won the game. That's what counts. But you always want to look to improve no matter who you're facing off against and no matter what you're playing. I'm excited to see more of Torch in the future. I quite like one glance. He's a cool guy, and I think he's got a lot of potential. It's all about that grind, and hopefully... We'll one day see Torch at the top of the Challenger Cup. And now we're going to be moving on to our next match, which is Vicious and Delicious against Epiphany Gaming. Now, Vicious and Delicious and Five Angry Men, who we mentioned before, are in contention for the second place wild card position. Yes, they and what are. it comes down to is if Five Angry Men gets second place, but Vicious and Delicious makes it to the semifinals, then Five Angry Men will not be able to qualify for the wild card. So, it's actually the match after this one. Vicious and Delicious obviously wants to get through Epiphany in the second round. In the third round, when they face either Mathletes or Resist Gaming, that's the decider. But if, if five they angry make men semifinals, if, they, if five angry men win, they win. They're good. They're good. Okay, They're good. okay. But, but if they come second, if they come in second, they have to Vicious rely Delicious, on not getting to the semis. Exactly. Okay. You heard so it here intense. first, guys. Things could happen. People will win. People will lose. And two people are going to the wild card. We'll be right back. And the game is ready.